Hi everyone, it's MJ and in this video we're going to discuss some things that you need to know before you invest in 2020. Now quick disclaimer, even though I spent 8 years becoming an actuary and I've got my fellowship in investment applications, I'm not a registered financial advisor and thus this video is purely educational. But with that said, let's consider some of the things that you need to consider before you start investing. And I think the very first thing that you need to do is you need to consider what are your investment objectives. So before discussing ooh, what stock you're going to buy and how much you're going to put into bonds and whether you're going to play with derivatives or not, you need to actually think and say, hold on, you know, what, what are my personal goals? What do I actually want to accomplish here? And in order to do that, you know, you need to consider your liabilities, your dependencies, and yeah, you got to be a little bit realistic. You can't go out there and say, guys, I'm going to 10x my investment in one year. I mean, if you can get 20% return in one year, that is considered, especially in today's economic uh, climate, that is considered quite, quite amazing. So have those realistic expectations at the start. And when it comes to your investment objective, what you want to do is you want to clearly define the following things. You know, what is your time horizon? Are you investing for six months or are you investing for five years or something in between or maybe even a little bit longer? What is the timing of your cash flows? You need to consider your liquidity requirements. You know, you might need money at the end of every month to pay for rent or various expenses. So you can't just put all your money in a high yielding fixed account that you have absolutely no access to. You know, you need to consider these things. You also want to look at, you know, what are your total required returns? And again, it's difficult because you need to be realistic, but you also don't want to just settle for, you know, any old low return, because if you do look, there are going to be some interesting uh, opportunities out there. And then, of course, and I think this is where a lot of people maybe struggle, is you need to determine your risk tolerance. Now, risk especially coming from an actuarial point of view, it, it can get a little bit confusing because when you're talking about risk, are you referring to volatility of return, downside variance, probability of ruin, value at risk, likelihood of shortfall, expected shortfall, chance of failing to meet your liabilities, tracking error. I mean, there's so many different ways that we can consider risk. So you need to get that understanding before you can actually figure out, you know, what is my risk tolerance? You don't want to just say, oh, I'm you've got a high risk appetite and, and leave it at that. That statement means nothing. Um, also, you, you need to understand that there's no such thing as a risk free investment. I sometimes see other YouTubers say, oh, put your money here because there's zero risk. And I'm like, but is it? I mean, even sovereign bonds have credit risk, you know, despite what the textbooks say, uh, you just look at history and you will see that countries have defaulted. If you deal with any institution, no matter how large, you will be taking on some counterparty risk. Purchase any asset and you will be exposing yourself to various market related risk. Use any currency and you have inflation and exchange rate risks. And I mean, we're barely scratching the surface here. I mean, this isn't even a comprehensive risk identification phase. Um, we haven't even looked at, you know, how to measure individual risks, how to aggregate them, how to model them, how to manage them, how to monitor them. I mean, risk risk can get quite uh, quite complicated. Um, it was one of the, the subjects that I specialized in was enterprise risk management. So I don't know, should we say if, because I don't want, like, there's always one person who says, okay, go make the video. But I think if we get, if we get 100 comments, so 100 individual comments uh, below saying, hey, please make a video where you discuss risk, then I'll make that happen for you guys. But but let's, let's aim for 100. I think I think that's reasonable. I think that's reasonable. Um, but coming back to investment objectives, I mean, for me, roughly, I want to beat inflation. Um, that's just because I'm in South Africa and inflation is is a proper concern. Um, and that's going to help me match my, my personal liabilities, which are also going to be growing in line with inflation. Um, I'm more on the preserve capital, you know, cautious side rather than the aggressive grow capital side. But again, that's my personal preference. Um, and again, if you read a textbook, it will say someone at my age category should be more risk aggressive than what I am. But I don't know. Maybe maybe it's because I'm an actor, you know, we tend to be more more cautious and risk adverse. Um, but I also want to be tax efficient. And that's, that's probably 
the hardest thing to do. Uh, fortunately, my brother is a chartered accountant and he's got his master's in finance and his wife is very, you know, she's done a whole bunch of studying on, on tax herself. She's also a CA. So I get a little bit of help um, on that side. Uh, but what I also want to do is minimize my investment costs. And that's both directly. So if I'm going to you know, invest w through an institution, fees for me are very, very important. I mean, we don't understand that 1% per annum over a long period of time becomes a substantial drain on your expected returns. So I want to look at institutional fees that are more like 0.3%. Um, maybe even lower. Of course, that does put me in the passive category rather than the active, but passive and active, I think yeah, maybe we'll, we'll do that in another video because that's another can of worms that you can really, really um, yeah, spend a lot of time doing. But I think the reason why I also kind of tend to favor passive investing is because of also the indirect costs, and that's like the time that I spend managing my portfolio. If you're gonna go the passive approach, it's going to require less time and effort. And for me, that just means more time to do fun things. Um, so unless active investing can prove that there's a substantial gain, and like I said, it's, it's not an easy question to answer because depending on the economic conditions, one strategy will be favored over the other. And you need to do that investigation, particularly if you're managing other people's money. Like if you're an, an asset manager, and this is your day job, then you know I expect that investigation to be done. But for us who are personally investing our money, to do that investigation, it's you got you got to uh, I guess you know balance the the pros and cons of doing that. Um, I mean, we can talk more about liabilities, but they tend to be very personal. So it's something that you would you should rather discuss with your financial advisor. Um, like I say, if, if you've got children, your investment strategy is going to be very different to someone who's single. Uh, like I said, age is also a, a big uh, thing as well when it comes to looking at liabilities, dependencies, life stages, and, and all these other things. Um, we can also talk more about regulation, and it is something that you should consider. It is very boring, though, and it is very region-specific, and it's also always changing, so it's something I don't like to talk about specifically now in South Africa we've changed from the FSB to the FSCA you know we just we've, we've been changing a whole bunch of things um, and I mean if you'll notice from my, my earlier videos before I became a fellow actuary I was very very cynical about regulation um, although now that I'm maturing I am starting to see why it's important but I think regulation kind of needs a bit of an overhaul we don't it's not that we don't need it it's just that we need to rethink it um, and then speaking about things that are always changing, like I said, the economic factors are also something that you want to be familiar with and what their potential impact could be on your returns. And again, that's, that's another whole video um, you know, on, on its own. Uh, but after you've done these things, you can then go and consider another fun thing to do is to consider the, the available asset universe that you can potentially invest in. I mean, there are some really, really fun products now. And because we have the internet, I mean, this the universe is just growing. I mean, the fact that you've got cryptocurrencies and various other blockchain things, um, it's good to be aware of them. I personally feel that they're not, they're not viable for majority of people, but there is a small class of people where blockchain and cryptocurrencies does make sense to add to your portfolio. But like I said, we're getting a little bit into the specifics there. And I want to keep this maybe a little bit more broad. Um, once, so like, yeah, once you've considered your asset universe, you can then go to my favorite part, which is portfolio construction. Um, that's really where, I guess, the actuarial side comes in. Uh, this is where you develop your investment strategy and you kind of think, okay, how many bonds and how many, you know, what, what percentage of bonds, what percentage of equities do I want? Um, how am I going to be using derivatives and, and all these, these fun things? Then I guess where actuarial science differs from, let's say your CFA or your other investment degrees is as an actuary, we're trained to select a manager, uh, wherein those other degrees such as CFA, you're taught how to be that manager. Um, so the, I mean, there's a lot of overlap with the material, but manager selection is something that we do, like I say, as, as, as actuaries, when we want to invest you know, money on a pension fund or something like that. But it's also a very, very powerful thing to do as an individual. You know, when you're investing yourself um, and you say, okay, I want to invest actively in the stocks and I understand that, you know, 
companies out there uh, they know a lot more about this than I do I want to you know pay them to do it for me the next question is for well, well how do I choose which one and and that could easily be an hour-long video um, so that could also could be a nice nice video to, to follow up on this one um, so yeah I mean if if this video gets like a hundred likes then then yes I think I'll definitely consider making videos on the asset universe portfolio construction manager selection um, we can even look at monitoring, uh, which a lot of people fail to do because it's it can get a bit get a little bit awkward, you know, especially if your investments are going down. But that's when you should be doing it and looking at you know should we restructure or you know is this just some short term volatility that we can ride through. So like I say, before you invest in twenty twenty, there are a lot of things that you need to consider. But hopefully this video introduced you to the idea of the investment objective, which is a very very important thing to do. Um, then we also looked at how you want to be aware of your liabilities, regulation, economic conditions. Um, then, like I said, if this if we get a hundred comments down below, we'll make we'll make a video where we explain risk in an easy to understand way, and we'll look at its different dimensions and and those things. Um, but like I said, if this video gets also a hundred likes, um, I will continue making the rest of these so that when we do go into twenty twenty we have a really good idea on, on how to invest and how to yeah, make sure that if we're gonna lose money, we don't lose that much. And if we're gonna make money, we make the most in a responsible manner. But until then, I hope you guys have a great 2020 and I'll see you soon. Keep well, cheers.